You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 14th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where the smocking lamp is always lit, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. point of privilege here and no open our podcast i'm gonna do it anyway patriarchy honey patriarchy (laughs) i want to thank everybody who's donated to our gofundme i'm trying to pay off some medical bills before the end of the year and uh the gofundme is linked at our website and i want to get that thank you big thank you we're at about we've reached 17 percent of our goal last time i did the math yeah uh so thank you very much we're trying to wrap that up by the year end so if you have any leftover inauguration money for example (laughs) something like that if you that's that's what frustrates me is seeing that the inauguration committee is missing 50 million dollars yeah and i'm trying to raise less than five thousand for medical bills and this is true of everybody who's doing this on gofundme i mean tomorrow we're recording this on friday the 14th tomorrow the 15th is the last day to sign up for healthcare.gov uh-huh. and uh, get some help. Uh, 80% of the people who sign up get a subsidy. Uh, you and I got dental insurance for the first time in our married life we did. Uh, as a result of signing up. So it was good for us. Uh, I just, uh, it, it infuriates me as you can imagine. And I'm sure everyone listening is infuriated that people have to go to GoFundMe to, you know, their deductible Uh, is high. Uh, That's why I have, you know, almost $5,000 in medical bills is I have a $5,000 deductible on my health insurance. So Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, and I was in the hospital. So it's just, it's everybody who has to face that kind of health crisis or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they just have, they don't have the money to pay it off. So uh, I appreciate the help that podcast listeners, those who have it to give, uh, you guys are terrific. Thank you very much for your generosity. And uh, we have we're ba- we're back with our old favorite sponsor, Drift Glass. We are, I, I, and one point of privilege for me, I went to a, a, a group meeting yesterday of a organization I'm a part of that does a little bit of good work around the corners of our little town here, and learned uh, that the chain of events kicked off by homelessness um, means, I, and sort of I knew this because I used to do like nose counts of the homeless in Chicago and a bunch of other things when I when I worked there, but. Just to be very clear, one of the some of the people who are weighing in on the homeless situation in Springfield, which is very bad, actually, mm-hmm. uh, there are um, eight, six to eight hundred people who are homeless in Springfield, um, wow. and they're they're hidden, of course. And I I know the guy, one of the guys who who runs the shelter at night, and there's all the problems attendant to homelessness. But uh, w- one of the people who was speaking up on behalf of them were the hospital mm-hmm. people who run the hospitals. There's yeah. very good hospitals in Springfield who said it's very simple. You keep people in shelters, they get sick. You you force them to sleep outside, they get sick. They show up in the ER. Mm-hmm. And it is okay. cheaper for me to put them up at the Hilton than to put them in a hotel, in a, in a, in a ER room for an evening. Right. That's right. how wildly out of whack the costs of things are. And and the, the sort of knock, knock on consequences of not solving one problem is you create three more problems. Right. right. And so it's, that's just, it's not us. It's millions and millions of people who are living in a completely screwed up society where the priorities are all backwards and it doesn't need to be that way. Right. Um, yes, this week is brought to you by our old sponsor, Where the Good Lord Split You, where thanks to a last minute change of plans at the White House, dozens of John Kelly farewell sheet cakes are now available to the public at low, low prices. Order now before the John Kyle contingent gets them all. Yeah, because John yeah. Kyle's leaving. Uh, as yeah. planned. And yeah. uh, apparently there are some Republican donors in Arizona who don't want Martha McSally to be their no. senator anyway. So no. We just got fun with this. We yes. just had this conversation. <laughs> Why are you putting, no, don't worry, just tell me, just give me a name, man. You know, honestly, in the interest of unity, mm-hmm. uh, they really should nominate a Democrat, Blue Gal. Uh, they can't. It's against if, the law. 
if it's I, against state law in Arizona for them to do that. It has to go to the party right. that the previous senator belonged to. It, but they should rise above that. <laughs> and the centrist Democrat. You know, there's a lot of people trying to rise above the law this week. <laughs> We're just trying to see what they should do is uh, very much like a Joe Lieberman situation. You know, uh-huh. the, 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 the mythical third party that's going to save us all. That used to be the McCain-Lieberman party and is now like mm-hmm. the Mitt Romney and somebody else Joe party. party. Joe Biden, yeah, the Biden-Romney party that people who are huddled, you know, live their life huddled in a lean-to made of David Brooks columns yeah. are always wishing for this party. Well, here's what you do. Find a good centrist Democrat. Have them change parties and appoint them as an act of unity, Arizona. You could be a unity party. You could bring us all together. So just go do that thing because it's only the fucking Democrats who are ever asked to do this sorts of things. It's only the left who are asked to make concessions. The right is always assumed, well, they're, they're nuts. They're all baked in crazy and you can never ask them to do anything because they're all Mitch McConnell's bitches. So we can't ask them to do anything. So we leave the entire fate of the country up to the Democratic Party. And the first time they try to do anything, the first question out of Chuck Todd's mouth is, how are you going to get along with Republicans? What are you going to do to compromise with Republicans? And at this point, I think it really is incumbent upon anyone going on any show, I'm looking at you, Chris Cuomo, Mm -hmm. um, to go after the host. It's time to start going after the host of these shows. The people who put crazy people on the air, it's time to start asking Chuck Todd, what the fuck are you talking about? What the hell is your problem? And then relitigate the last 20 years of Republican politics and see how long your mic stays on. But that's just me. Mm-hmm. You know how I can be. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of opinions, Blue Gal. You have opinions. That's why we keep you in the trailer, Drift Glass. That's right. I, that, in, in the trailer, just snorting Adderall, getting ready to go. You know, you can tell, man, I'm, I've got Red Bull and Adderall. Oh, All I need are some, some KFC and some Diet Coke, and I'm ready to be sworn what into the highest office. What is the deal with that? Right. That, yeah. that, that's right up there, though, with our own Governor Bruce Rauner. Did you see that in the paper today? I don't and read that. Back ragged. in April. <laughs> Back in April, Bruce Rauner was trying to recruit someone to head the ticket instead of him because yeah. he knew he was going to lose. I'm going to lose and so why bad. why this comes out on December 14th uh-huh. instead of in April is, is media malpractice. They're protecting their source. They're protecting their, you know, that's just behind the scenes politicking until there's an announcement it didn't happen. I'm sorry. If the governor is actually talking to people about, I don't want to run, please run as a Republican. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he have really? a primary challenger? Yes, he did. That ran as an independent? Yes, he did. He had a, he had a, a, a primary challenger. Uh, Sam McCann was not a primary challenger. I forget oh. the name of the woman, but the woman who was to the right of him. Yeah, who was nuts, um, right. Whose name I, eludes me because, you know, I don't have – I can't remember all the crazy people. All the Blue Nazis, Gale. no. I can but... remember 40 cards and a 52-card deck, but that's <laughs> it. And uh, so I, I, her name eludes me. But she came within a few points of beating him. She did. Uh-huh. But that wasn't the kind of Republican he wanted to run in no. his place, so he ran no. instead. He yeah. wanted Jim Edgar to run in his place. Yeah. And Jim Edgar would – you know – Here's the thing, a ter- my terrible secret. Jim Edgar would be fine with me. Yeah, yeah. He'd be fine because he'd be a Democrat. Because the party in this, is in this world that we live in. Yeah, a liberal Republican who is not going to mess with abortion and yeah. is not is going to try to balance the budget as state law requires, mm-hmm. uh, and work with the Democratic, firmly Democratic legislature of the state. Yeah. 100%. Would, be, would be acceptable compared yeah, would, to a Bruce Rauner. Absolutely. Would be Bernie Sanders compared to a Bruce Rauner. Yeah, he'd be, he um, would be. All right, yeah, and, class, and, we were screwed last Friday. Yeah, we, we were. I'm sorry, you know, that the new, the Friday news dump happens while we're recording podcast. But it's, it's not a really dump. It's a fire hose. Yeah, it's a, it is. Jesus, it never it is. stops. But. Yeah. But last Friday, after we recorded, uh, Michael Cohen confessed to engaging in multi felon, multiple felonies. On behalf of this person, individual yes. one, yes. who yes. who was inaugurated president of the yeah. United States in January of 2017. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, it's a mystery. Uh, 
I'll go to Wikipedia and check that out. See if I can solve that, crack that mystery, figure out who they're talking about. I, yeah, I, it was... I highlighted that line on and put it on Twitter, and somebody said, "Oh man, I was really hoping it wasn't Trump." A little inside baseball, a little podcasting inside baseball. Uh, after we wrapped the show, but before uh, my lovely wife uh, was sound editing it. Uh, this news broke, and I said, honey, we should do another piece of our podcast. And I, honestly, I've never seen my wife brandish a knife that fast. It was <laughs> it was, it was, astonishing. One minute, it was, it was like sleight of hand. Uh, one minute, she's just the most pleasant person. Another, another minute, there's a knitting needle at my throat going, you said what now? What would you say now? And I said, oh. See, her inner Nancy Pelosi came out. Oh, I just yeah, said, okay. That's it. You know what? You know what? By the way, if you don't know it, not only does my wife is half the talent or more on the talking end of our show, she is our sound editor. This is – we don't have a staff. Nope. We can't we fire anybody. We have no staff. staff. No research, no nothing. Just no. The two it's of just us, us and three yep. cats and two kids mm-hmm. at home and one in college, and that's it. Let's get on to uh, some of this other Cohen. stuff on our list. Uh, more Cohen stuff. More Cohen it's just been a Cohen, Cohen-ish week. Uh, it turns out uh, everyone's doing the uh, song from Hamilton in the rumor it happened. So this is nothing original to us. But, yeah, it turns out Donald Trump, uh, individual one to his friends, uh, or John Barron or whatever <laughs> pseudonym he's going under, was, in fact, in the room with Michael Cohen and the publisher of the National Enquirer, David Pecker, when they were discussing ways to get rid of negative stories about Donald Trump's philandering and sleeping with people that he paid off in advance of the election. And Michael Cohen told ABC News, I think it was today or maybe yesterday. This morning. That Trump, no, this morning. Oh, Friday this morning? Friday. Yeah. In, in his, he, he broke out the uh, Tom Friedman black turtleneck, honey, so yeah. you know he's very sincere. Yeah. 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 Because that, that face just screams, you can trust me. I'm it Michael screams Cohen. douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to jail, douchebag. You're going to a, a minimum security jail. And you get to go but, after Christmas. You get to wait till March yeah. to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's nice. That's nice for him to work. It worked out that way. But he told them uh, he told I think it was George Stephanopoulos that he was told to make hush money payments to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal and was very concerned about how this would affect the election. So every alibi, every legal alternative, every but yeah, but John uh, John Edwards. Yeah, but I never knew uh, we're now reduced to. Of course, I told my minions to do illegal things, but they're supposed to know better. My minions betrayed me by not covering up for my crimes and my infidelities and my treason <laughs> sufficiently so that I don't get caught doing shit like this. What do I pay and them I'm, for? Exactly. That's what this is. Now we're back to Don Draper. That's what the money is for. That's what the money. And this really is his mentality. I paid you good money to keep me out of jail. And now they're going to come and throw me and my crooked family in jail. So that's your fault. It never occurs to him. That be, not being a pervert and a criminal and a liar and a traitor is maybe one of those life choices he should have made. Right. Instead, it's like my minions failed me because I'm, I'm I'm now in trouble and I pay them to to land on grenades for me, which is why everyone is turning down the job offer of chief of staff. So far, uh, dark campaign cash grifter Nick Ayers has turned down the job of chief of staff, as has Rick Santorum, Chris Christie, John Voigt. And apparently the Hamburglar was also yes. asked and and is still in the running, maybe. I don't know. This is Friday, so who knows? Uh, Newt Gingrich, Jared Kushner. I'm guessing Jill Stein has a 50-50 chance of showing up on that list somewhere. And Clutch Cargo, because why not? You know, it's just you're, you're a cartoon that Trump's lips talk through. So why not just put a cartoon up there literally and have them do that? I, I agree with Will Bunch, who tweeted that the most interesting thing about the flurry of legal action around Cohen, the National Enquirer, Michael Flynn, Paul Manafort, Butina, etc., was how much of it, one, has already been reported and two, could be logically yeah. deduced. We already knew all of this stuff. And still, in my personal opinion, it's not going to hit critical mass with a large section of the public until Republicans. Well, and particularly Mm -hmm. the Republican party, but the public, the the public that lives on Instagram, the public that doesn't politics, isn't the core of their interest. Dancing with the stars is the core. Uh, Dancing with the stars. And, and you know, that's, that's what any stable democracy we can afford. Yeah. We can afford to have that as part of our public discourse Mm -hmm. until there are tapes played in public. Yeah. Yep. Until we have a dramatic televised moment that pe- people can play on their phones, mm-hmm. it's not going to be 
critical mass with people that Trump has to go. No, no. But this for, so, the, for those, anyone for anyone who follows politics at all, uh, this is like the worst Agatha Christie novel of all, because in yeah, the first yeah. two pages, the murderer is dancing naked in the garden with an axe in his hand. And then you have 200 more pages. Like, why are we going through these 200 more pages? We know who right. did it. We, we know, know why he did it. We know the animal rolls up his nose. <laughs> we know yeah. we did it. Why are we, why, why is this drama, dra well, you have to let due process take its course and you have to do a bunch of other things. But it's, it's all taking place under glass in public view. Everyone can see what's happening. And so to me, as always, the real story, the real story is always how are the people who have been lying about the Republican Party for 30 years, either in the media or as members of the Republican Party, reacting to the fact that all of their cards are being played face up, that we can all see what they're doing and we can all see where they how they got there and watching them stumble all over themselves to invent excuses or make up reasons why they never knew or put lunatics on television as if this were just a normal time. Let's put let's put uh, Kellyanne Conway on with with a panda and have them fight and call it news. This week, even David Frum, oh my God, even David yeah. Frum said, the reason you have clowns like Kellyanne Conway on CNN is because it's a performance piece. They put them on there. The host pretends to be outraged. The host knows damn well what they're going to say. It's a fucking puppet show, folks. It Which is you've been saying for, show. for years. For years. Well, Literally the, years. The liberal yeah. critique of the media is this is a puppet show put on by wealthy corporations who own news media outlets in Washington, D.C. and New York to pretend that there are two sides to every argument, that there is no blame to be placed anywhere, and that if you put a reasonable person across from a lunatic, the truth is somewhere in the middle, blue gal. And that makes everyone happy. That means that liberals don't win, conservatives don't lose, centrists have a place to jerk off and pretend that, that they're the wise ones because they're always talking about how we need a consensus in the middle, even though there is no middle and there is no consensus. That's the business model. And the business model is now shown to be actually the toxic mechanism by which we got to the place we're at now. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. the people who are still playing that game, the people who are still running the scam, even though everyone knows it's a scam, like Chris Cuomo, like Chuck Todd, are the ones who look ludicrous. I mean, they, it, it's as if it's 1992 and nothing has changed and everyone is, it's all secret. And we really, we know what's really going on. We know what's going on with Newt Gingrich. We know what's going on with, with Fox News and Rush Limbaugh, but we're not saying it. And we can get away with that because we can continue to pretend these people are at the fringes. Now they're running the government. And you can't pretend that the Republican Party is anything other than a dung heap of racists and imbeciles anymore. And that's a story that they don't want to talk about because it okay, makes them all look there bad. There are two components to that, Drift yeah. West. One is treating the White House as if it is a legitimate source for news. Right. And that is something that CNN is programmed to do. Right. Under ordinary circumstances, that would be a perfectly okay thing to do that you would, you know, you can disagree with the White House. You can sure. say they're spinning things, but you still treat what is said at the White House press briefing as if, all right, this is what the White House is actually doing. Right. This is actually their policy and how they're going to implement it. And we're going to report that as something that's actually happening. You can't do that under the Trump administration. No. The second part of that component is the second component to that is believing that Trump and Trump White House isn't the Republican Party. And there's a belief out there that somehow we're going to get past this Trump business. And you and I talk about this all the time. Uh -huh. And then the Republican Party will resurface. Uh, chastened, perhaps, yes. but ready to move on. Mm -hmm. And for the sake of the nation, we all need to move on yeah. and uh, rebuild. And we'll put Kasich or somebody in there as a placeholder to yeah. say, you know, not me, not us. It wasn't us. We're independent. And uh, I just listened to country music and never liked the tweeting. Right. Uh, that's that's it. That's the plan. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. And we can't allow that to be the plan. No. If you care about Social Security and Medicare. We can't let that be the plan. If you care about the future of the planet, you can't let that be the plan. No. We've got to burn the lifeboats. This party has got to go. Which means that people, uh, this is not to just blow our own horn, but people mm -hmm. like us need to be a bigger part of the public conversation. 
<clears throat> we just need to. We, we have to. Be. I don't know how we do that. Because I, I don't either. I I, we I have, have a seven thousand listeners, folks, yeah. and we have regularly. We right. have some some months, some some weeks. We wind up with ten thousand listeners. That's great. We which is great. Love everybody. Love everybody that's listening. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, one half of one percent in any given month donate to the podcast, and we don't have a fifty million dollar extra fund out no. there or a billionaire or a millionaire sponsoring our show. And I've talked with people about this and the amount of kind of slimy muck <laughs> that you have to wade through yeah. to get sponsorships to, uh, you know, something I will never do, sell your advertising list, sell your mailing right. list right. to people. There are people that will do that, that oh, will, yeah. you know, buy it. Uh, <clears throat> it. You know, it won't, it's selling my soul as far as I'm concerned to do that. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, and so part of this part of this poverty is yeah. is, is self-inflicted. But uh, part of it is, you know, there just isn't an infrastructure to support truth. Liberal voices, liberal voices. and liberal voices. <clears throat> and there and really this, isn't. this gets back to something I've been asking this week as well, which is the, the comment that Trump made that if you touch me, my supporters will revolt. Right. You know, and and it goes back to what. Media Matter said about the New York Times. The New right. York Times is terrified of right wing media making life extremely difficult for them. Yes. And how, uh, you know, Michelle Malkin and Brit Hume in 2009 raised the roof over an FBI report, a DHS report about right wing terrorism. Right. And how white supremacists were armed and dangerous, and that was the terror alert that we needed to sound. This was a decade and ago. A decade. This was a decade ago. Huh? Yes. <clears throat> a decade ago next year. And Michelle Malkin freaked out, had a cow. You are trying to silence conservative voices. You are calling all of us uh, terrorists. And uh, how dare you? How dare you? And right. Joe Scarborough attacked the report. Yep. Uh, it was... It was it was a unified. Right. It, was it was a unified, unified attack from the right. Mm -hmm. The DHS is trying to silence in the era of Obama. Obama's right. DHS is trying to silence conservatives. Right. And they had and and what happened? Uh, Napolitano had to go around apologizing mm -hmm. because we're oh you know some of the people who were coming back Nazis and armed were vets. Right. And so and that was in the report because we hate you know, the troops too. Concerned that that there are some veterans coming back who have PTSD, have a gun, have a gripe against the government and are dangerous. Right. And and she had to go around apologizing to the troops and to the vets because they said something that was an obvious factor in, you know, being being dangerous is if you're armed and you have a, a PTSD problem, you might shoot somebody. That's right. just the fact. And then jump ahead a decade. But this, but but that is connected to mm -hmm. that fear. Why is it that they're afraid of that and not afraid of the majority of the people in this country revolting if Trump isn't removed from office? Mm -hmm. Well, jump ahead a decade, mm -hmm. and the New York Times headline is "Rise of Right Wing Extreme Groups: How We Missed It." How we we missed as a people, it. Yeah. we as a country, we as Americans miss, and it. I, this is something that actually worked. People on yeah. Twitter just lost their shit. Myself and my little voice too, but but mostly um, big, Blue large voices. Blue check marks. Yeah. Blue checks on Twitter have a, have a thousand times more clout than than you or I do. And it was like, oh no 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 no. Uh, this is uh, David Nywart has been writing books about this for decades. Right. Um, this has been reported in the left wing media. This is something that we talk about. This is something we uh, we know is true, and this is something that you chose, New York Times. You chose to run away from because you're scared to death of the right wing media calling you the liberal Jewish press. That's what you're terrified of, and you will buy them off at any price, including pretending this isn't happening. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations. A decade later, they do what they always fucking do. When the right, it turns out the left was right about the right all along. They roll out the David Brooks pronoun, we. Isn't it a shame how we failed? Isn't it a shame how Barack Obama wouldn't lead? Isn't it a shame how everyone is to blame for everything all the time? And in this one case, they actually changed the headline. They changed it to law enforcement missed, 
which is still not true. Law enforcement knew damn well this was happening. They reported it's, on it. And it was yeah. because of Michelle Malkin and Brit Hume that the people that put the report out and signed off and I had to run around apologizing. Yep. And, and this is where the dearth of a liberal, a robust, aggressive, loud, unapologetic, liberal media really, really costs us all the time because there is no because because they're not scared of us at all. And this is uh, I want to jump a little bit ahead in our notes to talk about the weekly standard because it bears on sure. this. Do you mind? Go right ahead. Uh, today's the day. This is uh, December 14th. The day is the day the weekly standard is shut down for good forever and all. Uh, no more weekly standard, which I think, you know, good riddance to bad garbage. Uh, but I have a lot of opinions on the subject, none of which bear on today. I would like to focus, however, if you want to read, I have something on my blog that talks all about it. I want to focus on John Podhoretz freaking out today and calling it murder. Today is the day that the Weekly Standard was murdered because, hey, why not throw that shit out? This is this is neoconservative double talk, um, the same kind of double talk that the Weekly Standard specialized in during the Bush administration, as you and I remember, but no one on the right apparently does. But he wrote an article talking about what a tragedy it was and how awful it was and what a knife in the back it was. But here's the thing I want to focus on. The approach, and now I'm reading from his own article, this approach was an immediate success. The Standard was the only successful high-end magazine launch of its time, and I believe the last important print magazine created in America before the internet began, blah, 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 blah. Now, next paragraph. To be sure, it has never made money. Magazines like it never make money. But its circulation has always been extraordinarily healthy. And within the giant corporations run by wealthy men who started the Weekly Standard and then bought it, Rupert Murdoch and then Anschutz, its annual losses were a rounding error akin to the budget for catering on one of their blockbuster movie productions. The Weekly Standard was a 23-year exercise in wingnut welfare. It was rich people operating at a loss every year to pay to get people into the media through the um, mechanism, the delivery vehicle of having a respectable publication under their name, which is why when you see Jonah Goldberg or when you see Ben Dominic or when you see Bill Crystal or when you see John Podhoritz on, on cable news lying about whatever they're lying about today, under their name is the name of the brick and mortar publication for which they worked. That's what Rupert Murdoch bought for them. He bought them respectability. He bought them into the game. He bought them health insurance, Drift Glass. Yes, he bought them that too. He bought them he bought them a living. He bought them a lifestyle. But he but for himself and for his ideology, he bought his way into the media. And that's what the liberal billionaires won't do. They will not underwrite the liberal media in the way that the right underwrites their stuff all the time. And Podhorz is having having a freak out that this exercise in a tax loss for 23 years is finally shutting its doors. and But it'll pop up someplace else because they always do. Their mailing list will be sold is going to be sold off to someone else and it'll, they'll go over there. But that's why we yeah. fail. Because liberal voices do not have anything like this. We don't have the money to bribe our way on to right. meet the press. And the right does. And they spend it. And they spend it over the course of decades because they know that if they shove their ideology down our throats long enough, Eventually, it'll become normalized. Eventually, Bill Crystal, Iraq war pimp, will become Bill Crystal, reasonable centrist, and never Trumper. And that's that's what they've done to, the, to our conversation. They've destroyed the public square by buying it and giving it to people who had no business being in there in the first place. And we need to take it back from them. Because I want to acknowledge the anniversary of Sandy Hook, uh, sixth anniversary. Yes, today. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about the seven-year-old girl who died in our custody. In the, and I say, I use that I know. pronoun consciously. It's our country. Uh, I, yeah. I am terrified that I will begin to threaten federal officials, and I know that's against the law. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me just say, I think the director of Homeland Security belongs before the Hague. And yeah. uh, that's pretty much the limit of how much I can talk about it before I lose it. So yeah. I'm going to stop no, there. No, my, my, uh, my wife is not limiting herself because she doesn't have things to say. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff. She to has say. a lot of stuff to say. <laughs> but, but it's but... very hard. She belongs, she belongs before the Hague. 
Let me put it that she way. Does. They all do. They all do. They all do. The whole the, – Stephen Miller right on down. Everyone who had a hand in this immigration policy of – deliberate sadistic John torture Kelly, cruelty cagey. they all do yep. they all belong in front of a a, a human rights tribunal yep. a merciless human rights tribunal yep. that will give them the sentence they deserve exactly um, exactly yeah. all right mm-hmm. uh drift glass where do you want to go next on our podcast well we can talk about ms butina or butina or as i refer to them john big Boute, because <laughs> People have no idea how to pronounce anything, so I just go back to the yeah. hallmark of all pronunciation, which is Buckaroo Banzai. The, the Russian honeypot that uh, yeah. apparently Vladimir Putin never heard of her before. No, don't know who she is. Never heard who, of her. Who is no. this woman who's, 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 um, who's av- her picture is the avatar for the Kremlin on Twitter, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I tell funny joke. Yeah. Butina who? Don't know her. Ivanka never met the woman. Uh-huh. Donald Trump? And he looks under his desk. You done down that, Donald? Never met the man. <laughs> you have no idea who you talk about. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let's talk about Chuck and Nancy. Okay. Uh, which is really kind of the Nancy show. Yeah. Let's let's be clear. Chuck Schumer is still kind of a pathetic figure. Yeah, uh, although he was the one that pushed Trump into that corner where for the first time on television ever, Donald yeah. Trump said, I will take responsibility. I'm proud. I'm proud to shut the government down. You know, it, they make a, a good team, but let's face it, she does the heavy lifting on she that. She does. She does. Yeah. Well, and because she's going to be the Speaker of the House, it yes. is now it is now acknowledged by everybody the inevitability that she was going yeah. to win this is now yeah. acknowledged, you know, by everybody in spite of the but, will but, she, won't she. But not. Democrats in disarray. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. That's the story. Let's tell that story. Chris Liz is not going to have anything story. to talk about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, no. We're not talking. So, uh, but she just called his bluff. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. You have all three branches of government. Go ahead. <laughs> and yeah. uh, he he looked like an idiot. He looked like someone who was mansplaining uh, uh-huh. to somebody who was way over and above his league uh, about how a bill, be- how many b- votes I need to do anything. Well, you know, whose fault is that? <laughs> Uh, well, I believe it's all of our fault, Blue no, Gal. It's everyone's not. fault no. equally. The fact that no. it takes 60 votes is a abuse of the filibuster that uh, has been perfected by one party and one party alone. Uh, and yes, Donald Trump claimed he'd be proud to shut down the government. Uh-huh. If, as you put in our notes, his demand for $5 billion for his surrogate manhood wall funding isn't met. Yes, yeah, I, it's, it really exactly is. And, right. and I give... Nancy Pelosi full marks for for bringing that up, uh, for making it about his manhood. They they should have said more about isn't Mexico going to pay for yeah. it? But I think they didn't want to bring a foreign country into that conversation. No. Well, and here's the thing: I've been in meetings before. I've been in debate rounds before. Uh, mm-hmm. I've I've been in debate rounds where the judge. This is going back at least a couple of years. No, I'm sorry, a couple of decades. Uh, where the judge stopped it. Uh, which mm-hmm. never happens, but we were so one sided. The judge says, "You know what? Uh, you guys are kicking their ass so bad." He said very politely, "Let's just stop, <laughs> mm-hmm. and let's have a mm-hmm. let's have a discussion about how debate let's works." Do a teaching right. moment, yes, because teachable there's moment. no point yeah. in this going on because these guys are whooped. They don't. They have no idea what they're doing. They obviously were just thrown into this room with a with a sample case in one hand and a speech in the other, and they have no idea what to do. So let's just sit down and talk about debate theory. And I think that was a, that was wonderful. It, it was helpful for everyone, um, and uh, it was a wise thing to do. This was such a one sided fight, yeah. Uh, and it was so predictable that it was going to be this bad. That Donald Trump was going to, you know, bring in the TV cameras, and we're going to do a thing in front of the TV cameras, and and they, as someone, many people have said, you don't bring a Pence to a Pelosi fight, um, <laughs> and 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 the people that have. Uh, the poly poly ticks who's been making all these little movies yeah. of that event and making uh, Pence into Weekend at Bernie's, yeah. you know, the dead corpse. Yeah. And also the latest one is Pence as Elf on the Shelf yeah. just sitting there. The Pence on the Fence, uh, I heard. But was they're that, very yeah. clever. Yeah. They're very, very but it was clever. it really yeah. was just um, and uh, just a, a brief aside. Uh, I usually don't promote other people's podcasts. Because uh, I want all of your attention just for us. We're very selfish here. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Rachel Maddow is going to have any problem. No, but in the spirit of uh, reaching down, smaller podcasts <laughs> no one ever listens to. There's a woman named Rachel Maddow 
who's yeah, done have you uh, heard of her? <laughs> a, a seven a seven part podcast. So you only have four hundred and sixty two to go to catch up with us there, Rachel. Um, <laughs> but it's really good. Uh, the Bagman and they're short; they're like thirty minutes long. You know what's even better than Bagman, though? Uh, me, me explaining to you, Bagman. When I'm sitting there knitting, right? I'm sitting there knitting, trying to watch a movie, and you walk in and retell everything Rachel Maddow did. I do. Did as I do. It's just shameless. It's shameless. <laughs> Uh, I gotta it, tell you more about what Rachel Matter just said on Bagman. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I yes. can listen to it myself. <laughs> yes, you're very indulgent. It's about Spiro Agnew, but it's, the parallels to what's happening now are beyond eerie. They're identical. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the same strategy, the same tactics, the same kind of criminality, the same kind of. Uh, the Republican base will never abandon Agnew because he attacks the media. You attack the sp- prosecutors. You claim liberal conspiracy. You go after the Justice Department. It's all there. The reason I bring this up is this is nothing new. In the Republican Party, this kind of behavior, this playbook is absolutely decades old. It's how they well, always behave. This is behave. the thing that shocked me about it yeah. was I thought this all started with Gingrich. Yes, yes. And realizing – that the Republican base has been this way for longer than I've been alive, basically. Yeah. 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 Uh, because, I mean, I was born in 63. Uh-huh. But when I when I thought about it and thought about Agnew and then realized, oh, wait, remember when NPR had the um, letters to Eisenhower about school desegregation? Yeah. And how <laughs> totally racist they were. And yes. like, I'm a good Republican. I voted for you, Ike. Yeah. And now you're de- you're putting those quote, 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 quote people mm-hmm. near my children in school. How dare you? Yep. You know, and yep. and realizing, oh, my gosh, this has been going on for ever. And, that, <laughs> and that that is what the national mandatory narrative about politics cannot abide or acknowledge. Yeah, because yeah. it has to have started with Trump. It has to have started the, when he came down the escalator. It has to have started when he's nominated, yeah. because it is impossible for Charlie Sykes and David Frum and and Rick Wilson to and the rest of the Never Trumpers and pretty much anybody who's been in in any position of any authority within the Republican Party or who's been a political reporter during that period of time to reconcile their complete willingness to ignore what was going on inside the Republican Party with their sudden 11th hour, oh my God, who knew the Republican Party was full of Republicans bullshit now? Um, And I I would call our readers' attention again in the spirit of of reaching out to these smaller publications that no one hears about. There's a wonderful article in the Washington Post today uh, called The Bomb Squad, and it's anti-Trump conservatives want to reverse the GOP's destruction, but they helped light the fuse. And it's by yeah. Carlo Lozada, Carlos Lozada, and it's about basically everything we've been talking about now for going on three years um, since Trump came down the escalator. Mm-hmm. If conservatism has been hijacked by Trump, as they argue, who left it so vulnerable? Yeah. These, these writers pose the question, but their answers feel more like feints at accountability, more like mea culpa than mea culpa, which is a good mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Never Trumpers hold everyone culpable for appealing to Trumpism except in any worthwhile way themselves. And that is finally an article in the Washington Post. And it's it's not Trumpism. No. It's the Republican Party and the Republican base. And I said so in August of 2016. Yes, so. yes you did. <laughs> Don't you dare call it Trumpism. Everybody, if you haven't signed up for Obamacare yet, you got one more day. Get busy and do it and encourage your friends to do it. There is one really cool story I do want to mention. Uh, uh-huh. Ferrara Pan Candy. Uh, I was involved in manufacturing in Chicago and the candy capital of the world it used to be in Chicago uh, is moving into the old Chicago post office. And that's great. That's 400 and they make jobs. Lemon heads and red hot. Lemon and, heads and red hot. Your, your favorite movie, movie theater. Candies. Yes. Yeah. And, and they're an yeah. old Chicago company and they're moving into a building that nobody knew quite what to do with. It's, the, it's this gargantuan post office building uh, right on right as you drive in uh, down one of the highways, you actually go under it. Um, and it's a great use of that facility and great to see 400 good paying manufacturing jobs staying in Chicago or, or being relocated back to Chicago. And that, I find fantastic. that, that is, that's great news. That's great. news. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Every one of those jobs, manufacturing jobs, is going to create two or three more jobs in the local economy. Absolutely. So Absolutely. good on us. All right, shall we? And, and this is the thing. I know it's on my mind constantly, but healthcare jobs do the same thing. They do. You know, there's been some great talk on Twitter about what happens when you 
in Britain when you cut national health and how, what that does to the economy. Yeah. That, uh, you know, we need people to work in healthcare and working in healthcare. Those are good jobs. You can actually uh, fund a community if you build a hospital. Yes, you, you can. Know, the whole good community jobs. around the hospital gets gets enlivened by that. Good jobs create other good jobs. It's a virtuous exactly. circle. And that's, you know. Absolutely. Anyway. Right, so go ahead. Go ahead and, and mention that Glenn Greenwald was on Wolverine. Oh, yeah. This is just. I'm going to give you your I told you so moment. Yeah. I, I've had so many. <laughs> Um, Glenn Greenwald, as you know, has been a regular wacky, semi-regular wacky sidekick on Tucker Carlson's show. And, you know, how can he sink any lower than that, right? Except maybe showing up on Laura Ingram's show. It's easy, right? Uh, you go on Laura Ingram's Laura Ingram's show. And she was delighted to see him. He was in New York, and we've never really met in person. And it's really great to see you. It's good to see you too, Laura. Let's braid each other's hair. Yeah. And, and they wanted to talk about um, how uh, offensive it is that people hold – them he people hold other people accountable for things they say online and in social media uh which you know again is the world's greatest tragedy glenn greenwald who called people cowards for deleting their tweets because he's into total transparency who then turned around and deleted twenty seven thousand of his own tweets is now going on the racist white supremacist ad death spiral hour with laura mm-hmm. ingram to talk about how how unfair it is to hold people accountable for the things they say and that, my friends, is peak fucking I told you so. And here it is, big as life and twice as ugly as we used to say, Glenn and his good friend Laura Ingram on Fox News. You and Bob Seska were right about him from day one. Pretty much. Right? We were the, about the only two. Nobody else wanted to hear about it. And we got slagged constantly. The, the spleenwald horde came. I lost you know, a, a third or half of my, my uh, readers over just all I ever did was hold Glenn Greenwald to the same standards he held everyone else to, which is telling the truth, not bullshitting and not making stuff up, which he did all the time. Related to the things that Glenn Greenwald did. Yes. Uh, Sean Hannity has deleted a bunch of tweets. Yes, he has. Including all of them related to all of the ones that were related to Michael Cohen. He's deleted. Why has he done that? Blue among, among other others. I don't know. He's trying to clean the, clean the slate, but uh, there's all kinds of bots, uh, photo. Yeah. Uh, screenshot bots that yeah. have saved all those tweets. Well, so, you remember late. who Michael Cohen's other client was? Was was Sean Hannity? Was Sean Hannity? So he's up to his eyebrows in this. Yeah, and uh, and then the other thing that uh, Glenn Greenwald did was go on Laura Ingram, and you know who else went on Laura Ingram? Um, Howie Kurtz, who actually works for Fox. I yes, get it. Now he does. But last night on on Laura Ingram, he said that Melania Trump was the most bullied first lady in history it's a goddamn shame <laughs> and uh it's not just that eleanor roosevelt flipped over in her yeah. grave when that happened yeah. no no <laughs> the the current living first ladies including the first lady whom uh melania trump plagiarized a speech right and called her husband not born in this country yeah. and uh on and on uh, you know, she's still there. That lit first lady is dancing the orange justice dance with Santa from Fortnite, on the Twitter yeah. today. Yeah. So yeah. No, that's kind of fun. Howie Kurtz will always take whatever position he's paid to take. Well, yeah. And, and then he went on Twitter after everyone blew up at him for this and said, I'm not talking about uh, social media. I'm talking about the mainstream media and how they bully Melania. Yeah. It's like your network, you know how your network treated Michelle Obama for eight years? You know, uh, you know, you know, mm-hmm. no, he had his, his memory erased this morning before yeah. he came out and said that. Well, it, it makes life easier for. All right. Let's let's yeah. read up the news roundup. Yeah, this this is the week that uh, Michael Cohen was sentenced to three to uh, three years in prison uh, for tax evasion, violating campaign finance laws and lying to banks and to Congress. So, you know. And I want to I want to comment about this because uh, a number of people on the TV uh, who should know better. No offense. I love all of the former prosecutors who are on MSNBC analyzing things. I really do. Uh, But a lot of them are asking the question, why didn't uh, Michael Cohen enter into a full cooperation agreement with the Southern District of New York? Yeah. And noting that if you do that, you have to say everything wrong that you did since birth. Right. You have to announce it. Michael Cohen is a taxi medallion guy yeah. in New York yeah. City. Who doesn't think he doesn't want to rat out the mob? Yeah, he'd have to flip on people who who bury other people in landfill. Right. Yeah. Right. I I I really don't think that that this is a complicated thing. No. You know. 
I'm going to go to th- go three years and come back and h- still have most of my cash. Well, he's going to he'll be a never Trumper. He'll write a book. He'll go on oh, all the podcasts. Yeah. He'll be yeah, welcome back as a hero. Be, yeah. Did you hear that Papadopoulos got out of his 20 day or whatever it yeah. was jail sentence and is now talking about running for Congress? I'm running for Congress now. It, it'll be great. <laughs> You'll be great, man. Because I'm I, I've got a hot wife and I'm really really good looking. Yeah, you get that Sonny Bono <laughs> seat. Go for that seat, man. Yeah. <laughs> Not in California. He's not going to win there. That's for sure. The Trump administration wants to deport certain protected Vietnamese immigrants who fled the United States to escape the Vietnam War. Yeah. Now, their argument is that these particular immigrants uh, have been found guilty of crimes. But this is much worse than that. This is really a let's find out who we can deport. Right. And deport everyone who isn't white. Yeah. You know who else? Possibly Raping the barrel. You know who else fled the Vietnam War? Donald Trump. So, you know. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, and he he also uh, canceled. I can't shed one single tear for this. Canceled the annual White House holiday party for members of the press. So there'll be no parties in Washington this year. I'm afraid. Oh no! Yeah, yeah there'll be plenty of parties in Washington. It just won't be at the White House. Yeah, and uh, you won't get to have your picture taken with Trump to send home to your mom. Like that's a big loss for yeah. anyone sitting there. Uh, Sean Hannity, as I said, deleted past tweets regarding uh, Cohen and so forth. Even mere hours before Michael Cohen was yeah. sentenced to three years in prison, he reportedly deleted over 270 tweets with five of them directly referencing his relationship. I think he Michael thinks Cohen. that means they're gone forever. Uh, he's they're sort of, not. He's sort of Ron Swanson in that regard. He just <laughs> If I throw my computer away, then the tweet will be gone. No, well, it's just it's just like... Uh, uh, Steve King from yeah. Iowa talking to the Google person about his iPhone. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Yeah. My my uh, my daughter's granddaughter's iPhone is doing something and the Google guy had to say we don't make yeah. iPhones, Congressman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I go on the site and type in lying racist shit weasel, my name comes up. <laughs> how come how come my Nazi pass is being thrown up in my face by the liberals at the Google? Yeah, well, we have a bunch of guys in back going through uh, card catalogs and typing this in in real <laughs> yes, time. That's right. No, we don't. Have you ever yeah. seen The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari? It's kind of like that. Um, that. When I type in the idiot, I get pictures of Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, that's not because one guy in Silicon Valley is making that happen. Yeah. It's because a trillion guys all over the globe are making that yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my favorite reporter from Chicago, Carol Marine. Uh, oh, so wonderful. We're so delighted because this is the week that the FBI re-raided Alderman Ed Burke's office in City Hall. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> how corrupt do you have to be to be raided a second time by the FBI? And my only thought was once you go Burke, apparently sometimes you do go back. So, yeah, yeah this well, is I, mean, a- I, love, I love the analogy you made, which was, you know. I'm a bootlegger, and I've already been raided by the feds. So bring out the liquor. That's right. It's cool. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, it's just a friend. Okay, come on. Oh, shit. It's the FBI. <laughs> oh, God damn it. We fell for the how, oldest how, trick how in the book. How, how corrupt do you have to be that the FBI knows that they can leave and come back, and you'll yeah. be at it again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just a fucking... you got to be... Oh. Stu- yeah, how stupid do you have to be? And here's the thing, just as a reminder, Ed Burke is not just a, a long-serving, awful alderman in Chicago who everyone hates the longest, yeah. by a long shot, with a long, racist, awful, ugly history. But he was also uh, the, Trump's tax attorney. Yeah, um, and that's the point. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. 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 Uh, National Enquirer's parent company admitted that they paid Karen McDougal $150,000 in an attempt to influence the 2016 election. They did this as part of a non-prosecution cooperation agreement that American Media Incorporated, the National Enquirer's publisher, uh-huh. entered into with the Southern District of New York. Yeah, David Pecker uh, in going in going to go to jail for his dear dear friend no, Donald Trump. No, I ain't going to jail for you, man. I love you, but I ain't going to jail for you. Uh, Morning Joe hosts claimed that Donald Trump tried to blackmail them. With a National Enquirer hit piece, Joe Scarborough talked about, quote, three people at the very top of the administration called and texted him to say the National Enquirer was going to run a negative story about him and his his uh, now wife, Mika Brzezinski. Quote, if you call the president up and you apologize for your coverage, the official said, then Trump will pick up the phone and basically spike this story. Mm -hmm. I have no trust in anything that Joe Scarborough says. 
And I and Mika Brzezinski is still his uh, just a meat puppet on that show. However, I completely believe this story because oh, it, well, it, it, and then he went ahead and did say stuff about yeah. her bleeding yeah. from her facelift yeah. and on and on and on. Yeah. So uh, the special counsel's office under Robert Mueller has issued more than 100 criminal counts against 33 people and three companies. Yeah. Witch hunt. Yeah, witch hunt. It's real Catching successful. Lots of witches. Um, and guess what? The inauguration itself was also a corrupt money grab. So every single thing about the Trump administration has been a massive grift that uh, occasionally edges over into outright treason. Which and this, this one may implicate uh, Ivanka yeah. because she set the prices. It wasn't just hotel rooms, but yeah. it was venue space. And apparently there are emails asking her, Really? Are you really charging that much? Because that's way over what other places are charging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's it's and and everyone who this is the part that just you know you got to shrug your shoulders. There was not one person who knew about Donald Trump um, before he was elected who's surprised at any of this because this has his been his life. He's been a a, a racist, lying criminal. Uh, grifting asshole who rips people off, lies about it, throws lawyers at them, and then pleads out um, his whole life. That's his whole business model, except for the fact that he learned how to play the wingnut pipe organ. He learned the vocabulary. He learned what right. you have to say to morons to make them vote for you by watching Fox News. Three word, three word phrases right. that are lock, easy to chant. Build the right? wall, lock her up. That's all they understand. Drain the swamp. Yep. Yeah. Those are the three mm-hmm. that were studied and workshopped and made into what the simpleton voters could understand. Uh-huh. All right. This is the importance of Democratic attorney generals, by the way. <laughs> it is. The incoming New York attorney general plans to launch a wide ranging investigation into Trump, his family, and anyone in his orbit who may have violated the law. Letitia James plans to investigate everything. Yeah. This caught co- her statement caused an absolute freak out on Fox News uh-huh. that it, this is a witch hunt that she's just out for as a personal vendetta against Trump, that this is, uh, you know, for her to say, I'm going to investigate everything, I'm going to check on everything, shows that it's a personal vendetta. I want to remind people, I want to get this right, 2010. It was 2010. It was the midterms right. of the Obama administration, the right. first midterms. A congresswoman named Michelle Bachman. <laughs> oh, there you go with your memory again, blue gal. So unfair. You so unfair. Her plan, I do. Her plan for a red wave. Yep. She said, she said to the press out loud on camera, if we win back the House, we should do nothing but issue subpoenas. Yep. That was her statement. And I'm not, this is not what about is because actually Letitia James has uh, legitimate <laughs> right. probable cause right. to investigate the Trump organization's finances. Given that he settled a lawsuit over Trump University, yeah. you know, you could still go back and look for all of where did that money come from? How did he all of a sudden have $25 million at his disposal to pay that settlement? There's a good question, you know? Yeah. I bet she's going to uh, subpoena his taxes. I don't know. I'm just a wild shot in the dark. That's here. A, betting she's going to subpoena her taxes. Tax. She could do that. Uh, also, um, by the way, uh, Matt Bevan, who is governor of Kentucky, uh-huh. he decided that it would be a good idea to uh, insert a very large bill, a total bill about reducing teacher pensions into a sewer bill and pass it. And it passed and he signed it. And the Supreme Court of Kentucky, the Democratic Attorney General of Kentucky sued the governor <laughs> yep. and the legislature. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, that is to- in total violation of actual law of how a law gets passed in Kentucky. It has to be read three times. There are sunshine laws that require you to let the Ameri- let the people of Kentucky know what you're voting on. Mm-hmm. And this was done just, oh, let's put all this in the sewer bill and we'll pass it and that'll get done, right? Uh, the Supreme Court of the state of Kentucky voted unanimously, <laughs> seven to nothing, <laughs> that uh, to overturn this law. And nope, so, nope. Sorry, dude. But that would not have happened without a Democratic attorney general going Absolutely. to bat for teachers. Right? It's, it's that okay. simple. Um, 
Rudy Giuliani continues to view the world as one of those tubes that you stand in with money blowing around. You just grab it as much as you possibly can, <laughs> stuff it in your pocket. That's Rudy's world. So even as all the shit is coming down, Rudy Giuliani is apparently continuing to solicit uh, security consulting contracts with foreign governments while representing Donald Trump. Because why not? He'll pardon me. Yeah, what the hell? How else am I going to pay my mistresses? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Trump doubled down on his decision to stand by Saudi Crown Prince Bonesaw, uh, despite his own CIA's assessment that MBS ordered the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, by the way, Times Person of the Year is yeah. the Defenders, the, the Journalists. The Guardians. The Guardians, excuse me, right. the Guardians, yep. uh, including Jamal Khashoggi, who is the first deceased person to be named uh, Person of the Year. Jared Kushner actually offered the uh, Bone Saw Crown Prince advice about how to weather the media storm after Khashoggi was killed. Future chief of staff, Jared Kushner, wow. you mean. Now that he's solved Middle East peace and reordered the federal government so that it runs like a Swiss watch. Uh, yeah. Inmate 1314. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going yeah. to be. If, if, at this point, you're listening to this podcast and just wondering at the massive tsunami of lies and bullshit and crimes and depravity uh, that the Republican Party, that's, it's you're not exaggerating. You're not imagining it. There is no point in American history where this ever happened, yeah. where this is so nakedly, openly uh, a, a looting of the United States by a bunch of lying, traitorous criminals who are also literally a crime family. And the people they've surrounded themselves with are the worst people in the country. And the people who vote for them and support them are the worst people in the country. You're not imagining it. You're not exaggerating it. Uh, thank God we now have a House, uh, Democratic House to use the crowbar to pry these people out of power. But um, if you think things are bad, you are not imagining it. They really are. The National Enquirer, it's not just one story or two stories they spike. That's their job. Their job has been always to find stories, stories that are uh, unflattering to Donald Trump and buy them and put them in a, in a hole. Apparently, it was a literal hole. The National Trump National Enquirer apparently kept a safe with documents about hush money payments and damaging stories it killed as part of its longstanding relationship with Donald Trump. That's exciting. Between that safe at the National Enquirer and the apprentice tapes that people are holding on to because they don't want you know, they signed signed a non disclosure agreement until a court forces them to turn them over. They're not going to talk about them. There's just you think the Nixon tapes were bad? Oh my God! Oh, it's, if these two things ever come together, uh, there'll be no more Republican Party. Yep. There'll be no place for them to hide. Yep. Uh, Drift Classic. I've got some breaking news so to insert, breaking insert news. in here. Um, yes, Charlie Pierce, the great writer over at Esquire. Has has oh. tweeted while we've been recording. Has tweeted, "I am still available for White House Chief of Staff." <laughs> you know, Charlie Pierce, <laughs> I will do it cheaper. Um, <laughs> let, let's face it, Charlie Pierce has the look of a a friendly uncle who will pick your pockets while you sleep uh, and use it, the money to to put in the poor box at church and buy himself some decent whiskey. Um, you know, he's Terry from Ray Donovan. Yeah. He's 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 the conscience of the country at this point. Me, I'm kind of a bigger, more thuggish looking kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and you really need someone who who not only will will fool Trump into thinking because I'll shave my head uh -huh. if that's what's required. Yeah. Uh, if you need that Matt Whitaker yeah, look, I can, can get that, that look you back. Can totally do no that. trouble at all. Yep. Um, but I see they would see Charlie coming. <laughs> They'd see the, the warm glow of his conscience coming a mile away. Me, I look like a narc already. You do. Put me in there for a couple of weeks. I'll have my tape recorder out on the desk. Um, boom, we're done. Yeah, but you know what? You're tall enough to be Fed Chairman, Drift Glass. That's true. Or <laughs> run the FBI, apparently. That's just, um, that's just a uh, allusion to the fact that Donald Trump thinks Janet Yellen was too short. Too short. To be... Fed on camera because you know. height matters you know the camera adds 10 years and 12 felonies i don't know if you knew this but it's true <laughs> yeah okay speaking of felonious assholes uh you want to do paul manafort no i don't want to do no, paul manafort no, i'm sorry i let me <laughs> Ew. This, yeah paul manafort told multiple discernible lies to the fbi and the special counsel's office concerning five different matters after agreeing to cooperate with prosecutors apparently he was also like FaceTiming with the White House yeah. <laughs> while, he was, while he was saying 
that he agreed to uh, turn them in. So, uh, In the disgruntled former employee department, mm -hmm. Rex Tillerson, who's getting too old for this shit, mm -hmm. uh, said that Trump is, quote, undisciplined, quote, doesn't read briefing reports and repeatedly tries to do illegal things, to which everyone in the universe said, Duh! Duh. <laughs> All right, seventy-one percent of Republicans believe Mueller's investigation is a witch hunt, while eighty-two percent of Democrats and fifty-five percent of independents see the investigation as fair. Uh, yeah. That's going to peel off a little bit when, as I said, yeah. when there's audio tape released. It really is going to take that hammer, I think, to wake a lot of people up. And there are consequences of this stuff because the Trump administration plans to unveil these massive changes to federal clean water rules. That would weaken protection for millions of acres of wetlands and thousands of miles of streams against pesticide runoffs and other pollutants. That it's all kind of frightening and horrifying and and grotesque at a distance. Mm -hmm. You know, this is as long as it's someone else. This is this is why pundits get away with murder. Yeah, but this is your faucet, David Brooks. Right. This is shit coming out of your faucet that your children, your family is going to drink. Now it's now your ox is being gored, and suddenly it's a big deal. But now there are actual real world consequences to the horrible people that the Republican Party keeps nominating, and putting into high office. And this is Republican policy is to yeah. is to lop off at the knees the EPA, which yeah. was created by Nixon, ironically. Uh, yeah. Drift class, this is again the importance of Democratic attorneys general. Uh huh. File lawsuits to stop this. That's what it's gonna take. Okay. Putin said that nobody knows nothing about Maria Butina. <laughs> Maria who? Don't know. Don't know the woman. Know Never saw her before. Yes. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Know what they mean. Uh, conspiracy monger and Trump hype man Jerome Corsi emailed Roger Stone two months before WikiLeaks released the emails stolen from the Clinton campaign saying, word is Julian Assange plans two more dumps. Impact, impact is planned to be disastrous or horrible. I don't have the exact quote in front of me. Um, but uh, yeah. he's also suing uh, Robert Mueller for defamation of character or something yeah, for charging great. Him. <laughs> and, and that Go gives him an opportunity to have a legal defense fund. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Robert Mueller's been nothing but going on television, talking shit about Jerome right, Corsi. Exactly. That's all he's been doing. I mean, I wish he'd get back to the investigation, but all you ever see is Robert Mueller leaking, Robert Mueller talking shit. Blah, blah, blah. Oh. Jerome Corsi. Yeah. No, he doesn't. Whispering, half drunk. On the Chris Hayes show, oh no, that's 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 Carter. Yeah. That's Carter Page in his Carter funny hat Page. and sweaty face. <laughs> I'm innocent of everything. I'm, I'm so busted. White House Chief of Staff John Kelly is now expected to stick around in a stasis field. Yeah. Until Donald Trump can find someone desperate and depraved enough to take the job. Well, he'll find someone. There's always someone who's if you just dig around in the sewers deep enough, you'll find someone who is Newt Gingrich, but not as smart, mm -hmm. not as clever, uh, who, who doesn't, whose sense of self aggrandizement uh, outweighs his sense of self-preservation. who will take the job for two weeks. And I hear Charlie Pierce is, is willing to he, do it. He so, is you know, willing. He said in March, yeah. he'd move around his calendar. To serve the nation. And we're, we're trying to make the uh, Trump, his new nickname to be Adderall Stevenson. I'm not sure how it'll stick, but uh, <laughs> apparently he crushes up Adderall and snorts it, which is, again, not terribly shocking to anyone. But this explains why his Twitter presence is now just one long, unhinged rant. Mm -hmm. uh, he, mm -hmm. You are watching a person with enormous power over the lives of billions of people lose his mind in public and you're watching an entire political party the republican party pretend it's not happening each week we post to our facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you the listeners this week's internet kitty is bert bert is a stray who has found a great place to eat <laughs> with our podcast <laughs> listener hasn't he though yeah uh, they don't know whether uh, yet whether it's bertrand or roberta so they're just naming this cat Bert. But Bert is a welcome addition to their home. He's still a little skittish, but uh, he does come for breakfast when it's the wet food. So, you yeah. know, he knows what's good. Yeah. <laughs> you can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses... We reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! 
let her on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately one half of 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can be a patron of the political arts and a member of the one half of 1% by donating, you know, five bucks a month or whatever. Or whatever. To our podcast. See our website, proleftpod.com for details. We have PayPal, GoFundMe, Patreon. We have merch. Uh, We try to make it easy for you. And our postal address information is there also. If you want to send us a Christmas card, I love getting Christmas cards. At proleftpod.com, we have all that information for you. Please share our show on Facebook or other social media, Twitter, whatever. We love to see that, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue gal, the Internet Kitties already spent every nickel of their inauguration fund on catnip and kibble. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovin'. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.